ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. Welcome to Share on the Air Radio. I'm Cielito Pasquale. I'm podcasting from Seattle, Washington. I, w- I want to welcome all of our listeners, especially our new listeners to this show. Uh, every episode of Share on the Air Radio is where we examine an extraordinary event unfolding in the world today. And that event is the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher, and the masters of wisdom. This is a non-denominational presentation for people of all spiritual and religious backgrounds and for those who ascribe to no particular religious or spiritual perspective whatsoever. It is a message of hope for everyone. And we present this story for your investigation. Uh, there's many sources uh, that you can turn to along with this show, and hopefully with every episode. This one is, uh, we're over 70 shows of Share on the Air Radio. So if this story, if, if our information intrigues you and you want to explore more, I will be sharing different resources for you later on in the show. Um, so... If you're listening, again, I always think about our new listeners. If you're listening for the first time, we focus on three important points about uh, this event of the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher. And by the way, I do want to share with you the first two episodes of Share on the Air Radio are introductory episodes. And you can find them at our website, shareontheairradio.org. You can also follow us on Facebook if you have a question and you just want to get a direct link to resources. Follow us uh, at Share on the Air Radio North America. Uh, And you can also write us. If you don't want to use Facebook, you can write us directly at info at Share on the Air Radio. So uh, info at Share on the Air Radio dot org. So those, the three points we like to get across um, for everyone to keep in mind as we uh, uh, engage in discussion on this show is that one, humanity has never been alone. And two, we have help of an extraordinary kind present in the world today. And three, the solution to the world's most intractable challenges are within our grasp. Once we as humanity implement the principle of sharing and justice on a global scale. So keep those three things in mind. Those are central to the story of Maitreya's emergence. Um, You'll find those points brought up uh, at every resource uh, on this story that we share with you here today. And on this particular episode, we're going to focus on a very compelling topic with our guests today. Uh, I think our audiences will find it very timely. We talked about this subject about six months ago, but we're bringing it back because um, the, the writings of the author Benjamin Krem are the direct inspiration for this show. And one of the topics that he covers in one of the 18 books that he's published is the topic of overcoming the, the overcoming of fear. And um, the, uh, this was published in Benjamin Krem's book entitled Maitreya's Mission 2. There's a Maitreya's Mission 1, 2, and 3. 
And uh, that article is on our website at share-international.org. But you can just go to our Facebook page and you'll find the link there. I actually just posted it right now. Um, And the topic, again, is the overcoming of fear. So today we're bringing back uh, our guest who was on a show in April discussing Benjamin Krem's books. Her name is Maureen Perrin. She lives in the Bay Area in California, dear friend of mine. I've known her for many years, and she gives frequent public talks in the Bay Area on the story of the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher and the masters of wisdom. She is an avid reader of of the books of Benjamin Krem, as well as the entire body of knowledge of work known as the Ageless Wisdom Teachings. And she has a depth of knowledge that she shares quite generously, and I'm pleased Please, she's taking time with us today. Maureen, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, we we had our pre-show conversation the other day, and you thought it would be a good idea. There's so much that Mr. Krem has written on, and um, you thought uh, discussing overcoming a fear would be very timely today. Why Why is that topic important to you? And important now. Well, I don't think there's anyone listening who isn't somewhere harboring some fear, a fear certainly about the future, uh, the political situation and the economic situation and the social situation in our world now is so critical and so clearly full of dysfunction that we can't help but push away fear. In addition to that, our fear is fanned by the fires, often by the media, by uh, people who take advantage of that to, for their own purposes. And so there's just a climate of fear, I feel, a cloud that's kind of encircling our planet at this time. And so it's, it's possible to, when we say overcome fear, what... Um, what what do you what does that mean to you? Are we talking about eliminating fear entirely? Are we talking about living with fear? Um, what, uh, what's the perspective that the, that uh, um, will help us in understanding what fear is? Well, I think uh, one of the things that Mr. Krem addresses in the very beginning of his uh, piece in the book, My Transmission Volume Two, is is that fear is so destructive, so corrosive, so limiting that it's something that we need, we all need to address when we're thinking about getting through the day and getting through life. Uh, I think it's uh, so important that we have the opportunity to examine what is fear. And Mr. Krem addresses this in detail in that a section of Master Maitreya's Message, Volume 2. What is it? And taking that as a task that we can set for ourselves to look at the experience and to maybe dissect it a little bit so that we can overcome it. And uh, you shared with me a great quote uh, from the article uh, would you like to share that with uh, this is from uh, Mr. Cram would you like to share that with our audience uh, before we begin to dissect fear well, I think you're referring to the quote that um, but I will certainly use this one at this time of worldwide political economic and social upheaval the use of fear as a tool to manipulate is common practice through the use of fear we are manipulated in ways that make us suspicious of those who are not part of our group, however we define that. Not part of our country, not part of our nation, not part of our group in general. He uses the analogy of a prison because he said we can't have fear and be free. Mm. We can't have fear and be free. So freedom, uh, we have to be free of fear in order to experience freedom. And certainly what you just described, fear uh, being used as a tool of manipulation is is very much evident 
in the world today, all over the world. Um, so there's the global scale of fear or the international scale of fear, and then there's uh, individual fears, the fears that we have in, in everyday life. Um, wh why don't we begin with uh, making some distinctions around fear? Um, um, you know, there's, there's natural self-protection, uh, there is psychological fear. What are some distinct distinctions we can start to make so we can begin to understand what fear is? Well, I think there are the sort of there are the two categories, if you will. Um, one is the sort of everyday fear, some of which is perfectly obvious. We want to be uh, careful. We're fearful of hurting ourselves in some way, or we're fearful of making the wrong choice in uh, something that we're doing. Those are sorts of everyday fears, and many of them have a basis in fact, and generally are for the immediate moment. But then there's the more pervasive, what Mr. Cram refers to as psychological fear. Fear uh, fears based on desire for things to happen or desire for things not to happen, fear for uh, our own personality being perceived as somehow uh, unacceptable to others, all kinds of, at every level, psychological fears, which inhibit us greatly and are usually very painful fears. So we're nearing a break, and uh, in segment two, we are going to talk a little bit more about what fear is and what we can do to overcome fear with Maureen Perrin. Stay with us after the break. This is Share on the Air Radio. Conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Spiritual, metaphysical, green living, psychic, alternative healing, life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcotte, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. Want to help build the coming golden age? Want to experience the Aquarian energies of love, light, and power? Transmission meditation is a simple way for you and two or more friends to do just that and accelerate your own spiritual growth at the same time. Check out Transmission Meditation at ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. That's ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. Hey everybody, Rachel Ray here. Nothing brings a bigger smile to my face than cooking up a big meal for the whole family and lots of friends. But there's not enough room at my table for the 17 million kids in our country who struggle with hunger. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks collects surplus food to give hope to hungry kids. But they can't do it without your help. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. And we're in segment two of Share on the Air Radio with our guest Maureen Perrin. We're discussing overcoming overcoming the overcoming of fear, as written by Benjamin Krem in his book, Maitreya's Mission Two. 
and uh, we were just starting to describe the different kinds of fears, Maureen, and uh, I would like to um, uh, talk about something that was brought up on our show last week. We were discussing with David Minot uh, what's uh, m- one of Maitreya's teachings on the art of self-realization. And uh, we mentioned fear briefly um, as a result of identifying with the things that are not the self, self with the capital S, the divine self. Can, can you elaborate more on misconceptions of fear and misconceptions of the purpose of life. Um, sometimes we believe that we need to be a certain way and life needs to be a certain way. Then we see that things aren't turning out that way and then we feel fear. What, what are some of those misconceptions about life that we have that, that create fear in us? Well, I think that the primary one is that we have, um, we are very, very focused on the physical, everyday purposes of life, of making a living and those kinds of things. And somehow in all of that is lost the overall meaning and purpose of life, which is to grow in awareness as a soul. Hmm. Why are we here is the question to answer. And to think about for ourselves what is the purpose and meaning of our life and that very consideration takes us away from the fear when we start to ask the question what is this fear about why am I afraid we start to detach from the fear and we become as we become disengaged there's a freedom there because we start to realize that fear is the result of thought. We have certain thoughts, and those thoughts are fearful thoughts, and when we engage with those thoughts, we become fearful. So looking at the thoughts, detaching from the thoughts, and start to realize the misconceptions we have about our own purpose and our own, the, what's really meaningful to us. You know, this this reminds me of, of the axiom of uh, be here now. In other words, being in the present moment. Um, often when I remind myself to be in the present moment, I actually stop thinking about either the past or thinking about the future. And typically if I think about the past, I'm regretting something that happened or didn't happen. If I'm thinking about the future, I'm afraid of what might happen or, uh, yeah, usually it's a, I'm afraid of what might happen or how I might fall short of something and not do something. And uh, is that the same thing, being in the present moment? with Is that the same as uh, detaching? That certainly is the way to ground oneself and get oneself disconnected from the fear definitely and and this you know it's sort of it's a cliche that all we have is now but it's the fact the past is over and the future hasn't arrived and right now this minute that you and I are spending is the only minute we have and so that does another way to detach from the emotional responses to the fear situation whatever that fearful situation is simply to observe to take the role of examiner. Let's look at this fear. Now, Mm -hmm. we look at it, we observe it, without trying to do anything about it. Well, that's a challenge. (laughs) I know I can say that from personal experience, Mm -hmm. to do nothing about it. So, gosh, when I think about, uh, when I experience fear, um, I am trying to do something about it, A, I'm trying not to feel it because fear is uncomfortable or I am trying to do something to feel better uh, which is typically distracting myself from the fear that can be oh I'm gonna go eat or oh I'm going to go out of the house and go meet friends and get really um, in, in involved in a lot of activity so I don't have to think about uh, think about how I feel and think about the fear that I feel Certainly, it's good to be with friends, 
Um, or the opposite. I I want to be by myself. I isolate so I can just <laughs> my thoughts can keep going and I can worry about the past and, and the future. So it's it it is very hard to not do something about uh, about the very uncomfortable feeling of fear. Um, and I'd love for you to elaborate. You you mentioned the purpose of life. Even hearing you talk about what is the purpose of life. The, for me right now that has a calming effect like wow I'd love to just sit quietly somewhere and think about that <laughs> um, what, what let's talk a little bit more about the purpose of life and why we're here and the purpose of the soul well I think our purpose is to reveal our soul nature and by revealing our soul nature we elevate everything around us and we change the world because for every person who manifests their divine nature that's that's another energy and part of the flow of humanity moving forward and moves everything forward and the idea that we can actually do that by sitting in one space and living with what you refer to in general as discomfort around our fears just sitting there and living with that the idea or even the thought that it is something that can change us and change the world I think is a very um, uplifting and a game-changing kind of expression of our using our thought thought program our thought our mind to make the kind of adjustment we need to make to both feel better about ourselves feel about about our world and make have changed the changes we're seeking actually manifest mm -hmm. because fear stops everything nothing grows mm -hmm. nothing improves nothing is everything is frozen and like you said you mentioned you know your everyone's natural tendency is to run away from it either by distracting ourselves with something or by pretending it isn't there or by doing something that may be a good idea but maybe not instead of just sitting with it just as Mr. Krim says when we know who we are that's all there is to know and how do we know who we are we know who we are by sitting with ourselves and observing observing our res responses to life observing among those responses observing our fear I love that when we know who we are that's all there is to know um, it, along the lines of uh, our, our discussion last week and I bring this into our discussion now on the overcoming of fear because it is I, I see it as connected um, we, we touched on the idea of the, there are the vehicles of the soul or the self and then there's the self um, can you talk about how um, identification with the vehicles versus identification with the self or the divine expression um, how how that brings about fear well identifying with the self the at little s self which is the personality in this lifetime and this is limiting it's it uh, usually brings in both the physical uh, whether we're comfortable for example physically comfortable whether we have physical needs that aren't being met which are very valid then of course there is some the emotional emotional needs are being met or not met and feelings that we have and of course most of us spend a great deal of time focused on how we feel so it's a human trait at this point in our evolutionary stage and then there's the thought the, the the everyday mind thoughts about what we're going to have for dinner and about what makes us fearful and all of those are part of our nature all three of those are pieces of who we are in this lifetime in this world so the opportunity comes then to take that in and observe it as a whole and ask myself in my case I'll be um, who is observing who is the observer that can observe my 
physical health, my emotional well-being, my mental processes. Who is that? And just being with that question, not even trying to answer it, opens up a door to a new way of thinking and releases a great deal of tension about those three different levels of our, what I call, personality, the physical and emotional and mental. And that, it seems to me, one, when, when one asks oneself, or if I ask myself, who am I? And, and not attempting to answer that question. It really allows for space to, I mean, as I'm asking it now, there's a, 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 a sense of quietness, which is distinct from searching outside of myself. What are the things outside of me that people see that they recognize, oh, I'm important. You know, we're so, we're, our, our world is built around how we appear to others, how we physically appear, how we speak and present, how, how many degrees do we have or not have, how much success do we have. Are, are, are those aspects of life that, that can promulgate a, a psychological fear? Well, I, I think that Mr. Crum would say that's exactly right. I don't know, but uh, that's definitely um, projecting into, a lot of what you've said is projecting into the future or projecting outside of yourself to what other people's points of view or opinions or whatever. And, and in some ways, those are a, a little bit of a waste of time in terms of what, who we are, who you are, who I am. As that is the not who we are. Who we are is this, this centered, in the moment soul. And as we develop the observational point of view, as we become more familiar with ourselves from that perspective, we become not only more accepting of where we are at this moment, but more open to change more open mm. to growth because we're not shut in and trapped by these ideas about ourselves or by these limitations that we think are so much a part of our lives. And thereby we become more independent thinking, uh, yes. I imagine. Uh, and, 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 and that can... therefore less subject to fear. Mm. Well, on that point, it, I think we're at a break time. Uh, in the next segment, in our in our third segment, um, let's let's talk a little bit more about um, how how can people you know there, there's so such tension in the world today, and we see what's happening happening in the news that generates fear. Um, that's a fear on a bigger scale. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about how to begin to understand that level of fear on Share on the Air Radio with my guest Maureen Perrin. We'll be right back after the break. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Want to help humanity and the planet? Transmission Meditation is a simple but powerful way for you and two or more friends to do just that and dramatically accelerate your own spiritual growth. You can read the book on Transmission Meditation free online. Visit ShareOnTheAirRadio.org for details. That's ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. My name is Dale Pazinski, and this is how I live United. I volunteer with United Way, helping the homeless in my community by teaching computer skills and helping them build a basic resume to save on their very own USB drive. It's huge when somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. 
So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. And we're back on Share on the Air Radio. Uh, Later on in the show, we're going to talk about transmission meditation. It was mentioned at the break on one of our ads. And that is a a very powerful form of meditation that can help us. Um, uh, It's a great tool uh, for growth of consciousness that can help support us in uh, growth of self-awareness and the overcoming of fear. We'll talk about that uh, in segment four. Um, I was talking about, I brought up uh, the, the, the reality. There is the reality today that we live in a world full of tremendous tension. Um, they're at a very high pitch. We're seeing violent and tragic events taking place which would cause most anyone to be anxious and afraid. And of course, people by violence or conflict or war have an unpredictability in their lives, which would bring about constant fear and stress. Uh, refugees, for example, uh, but not limited to refugees. Um, Maureen, how can we understand these events so that those of us who are in a position to help others, um, how, how can we, how can an understanding of what's happening in the world from the esoteric standpoint help us to help others and to bring about lasting transformation that, that we are anticipating in the world? Well, that's a big question, and uh, I'm not sure that I have. Um, a lot that is, is helpful, but I, I think that there is something that definitely is part of this is that it's sort of a negative, but how does being upset and afraid and disturbed help us? Mm-hmm. And the answer is not too much. Now, it's logical to be concerned and afraid about someone would have to be living on a ro- on top of a mountaintop somewhere not to pick up on the tremendous stress and energies that are negative that are in our world right now. And so to deny them is another form of not facing reality and is not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is observing as much as possible, observing them without, with as little emotional connection with them as possible. And for me personally, everyone has their own way, but for me personally, just looking at these, there are two things that, that, help me and of course the primary was is the information that we're sharing today and and share on the air shares every single program and that is that we have help we have human who have gone beyond the human experience have lived as we have have had all these emotions have had all these similar types of experiences and have evolved to a point where they can help us and these are the masters of wisdom, and they are behind the scenes working for the best and have assured us through Benjamin Krem that this will eventually, we will be in a much better place. And this is a very, very difficult time, and we are alive at this time for a purpose and to help our planet move forward evolutionary wise. So that's the primary thing that supports my efforts to stay uh, above the fray in with what's going on in the world as much as I possibly can, although I have to admit I move to tears almost every single day more than once mm. by what's happening in the world because my emotional nature does respond, of course. But the other thing mm. that I ask myself with regard to these fears about the world tragic events is that I, how how it, does my fear serve me and the world? Does my fear make a difference for the better? Mm-hmm. And the, my answer and my response to that is it does not. What makes the world better is shifting my attention away from my fear to solutions and to reaching out 
and asking the masters and, and Maitreya to help us. And, and those kinds of efforts shift my attention away from the fear and to something that I feel is helpful to dissipate in some tiny, tiny way what is going on in the world right now. Uh, I love the points you brought up. There's a couple of things um, that I want to mention. I I was living in New York. I mean, I want to use the word connection. Um, I was living in New York when 9-11 happened, when the airplanes hit the trade towers. And certainly in, in the United States, we so rarely have uh, large-scale terrorist events happening, although there's certainly a tremendous amount of violence. Nonetheless, that was um, an extraordinary event. And um, I remember, I mean, there were people who were escaping the situation by walking across the Brooklyn Bridge, and I lived on the other side of Brooklyn Bridge. And I remember being on the top of a hill in a park in a neighborhood called Fort Greene, and people had gathered there just stunned. And I would say that we weren't feeling fear. What we knew was that we needed to be with each other. Um, we knew things had changed dramatically, um, but we also knew that it was important to be with others. I certainly felt that way. I don't think I could have, um, I, I don't think it would have served me to be alone in my apartment feeling fearful, uh, but just connecting with others was um, um, very healing, and I was grateful to have uh, friends around at that time. It was in the middle of the day. So it, it, it's interesting what actually happens when, when a, an event of that scale takes place. I mean, I did wake up the next morning very like, oh my goodness, what is going to happen today in the world? That was a very... Um, disconcerting experience to wake up the next day um, but you big up bring up an even bigger point of when you say Maureen we are alive at this time for a purpose and I invite anyone who is listening right now to reflect on um, if you're listening this far into the show there's a reason I believe and uh, if you're listening, I, I am pretty sure that uh, you're responding often to the promptings of your soul to make a difference in the world. So that's a wonderful thing to reflect on um, uh, every day. Even, even myself, doing all that I do, it's, I think it's important for me to reflect on um, what, what is my purpose at this time. And that certainly takes me away from my personal petty concerns about personal achievement or how I appear in the world. Um, you know, what is my role at this time? If, if my conviction is that humanity is not alone, that we help have help of an extraordinary kind, and the solutions uh, to all these uh, tremendous problems are within our grasp. So um, even spending time with that question uh, distances me from other fears. So I guess I would ask, Maureen, when we talk about overcoming a fear, is it realistic to think that oh, if I meditate enough, one day I'll be completely fearless. Is that is that uh, realistic or kind of a pipe dream? What what is your what are your personal views on that? Well, I I'd have to you know this is totally my own personal point of view, but um, I think it's a process, and according to Ageless Wisdom teachings, it is it's an evolutionary process, like everything on the big scale evolution and on the personal scale evolution. So whether I ever achieve complete detachment is in this lifetime is, is probably unlikely, although I'd like to think I could do it. But but it's not achieving anything really, and that's that's really not a very good use of the word because it's in the moment. That's all we have. Mm. So in each moment, if we can connect with that higher what we I would refer to in Nietzsche's wisdom teaching refers to as the higher self our soul 
as much make that soul connection through the practice of meditation that becomes easier transmission meditation in particular a little more accessible the more time we spend on our own inner life that becomes a, a simpler and easier to do most of the time and just to connect there at that point at that moment I think is all that I can say for me you know you you bring up something that I'm reminded of that's that's part of the experience of connecting with the self and I I offer this to our our listeners long time and new as well sometimes connecting with the self can feel lonely because we're detaching from the the typical demands of the world we're reflecting on things differently than what is presented to us through the media and the side of a effect of that can be loneliness and loneliness can bring about a, a kind of fear and uh, I know Benjamin Krem has said that uh, being alone spending time alone is a tremendous gift to give to oneself because in being alone in loneliness that is where one connects with the the soul or the or the self um, Let's start talking about, we're, we're nearing a break, but let's start talking about transmission meditation. We talk about that often on, on this program as a form of service. Um, and maybe you can start us off before the, the, the music starts on how meditation helps the soul. Well, this is my language, but meditation is... Uh, opening the door to the connection with my soul it is like taking that time checking out from everything external and aligning myself with my soul nature as much as I can in that particular moment that day that time some days and sometimes it's easier than others or feels a little easier and aligning myself with my soul how would I know what how do I know that primarily it's from the practice of meditation I believe but whether you meditate or not everyone can access who they really are by sitting quietly and staying exactly in the moment wonderful and we're going to continue on that topic of meditation and the overcoming of fear after the break we are Share on the Air Radio, and my name is Cielito Pasqual interviewing Maureen Perrin. We'll be back after the break. Please stay with us. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Share International Magazine is unique in the world today. It draws connections that make sense between headline news and spiritual changes unfolding now on a global scale and explains the forces driving those changes. It may be the message of hope you have been waiting for. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to, are you? Kids, work, listening to the radio. 
you're busy. Which is great, because busy people can't get prediabetes. Oh my, I read that wrong. <laughs> they can. Should have worn my glasses. So visit doihaveprediabetes.org and take a short test, because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. And we're at our final segment of this week's episode of Share on the Air Radio. We're talking about the overcoming of fear. And if you're tuning in uh, a little later, well, if you're tuning late, you didn't hear the beginning of the show, uh, we have posted the link for the article, the writings by author Benjamin Krem, C-R-E-M-E, on the overcoming of fear on our Facebook page, Share on the Air Radio North America. You can find that there. And also in the break, uh, it was mentioned the Sh uh, Share International Magazine. You can actually find it's in print, and there is an abbreviated version online if you visit share-international.org. Uh, and we just have a few minutes left in the show, and there's a couple of things I wanted to cover uh, with our guest, Maureen Perrin. One, we've, we started talking about transmission meditation, and the second one, I, I think I want to shift uh, a little bit so that we have ample time to talk about it. I'm going, I'm going to talk about this one first, and, or I'll have you, Maureen, um, uh, give us some insight on the prayer for the new age. Uh, in in uh, the article of Overcoming a Fear and in all of the books by Benjamin Krem, the prayer for the new age is published in the front of the book. And there's a reason for that. It's it's an important prayer at this time. Would you like to talk about the prayer for the new age and um, uh, share how that can also aid in um, helping us identify with the self, with the capital S, and thereby uh, help us overcome fear. Yes, um, I'd love to. It's a beautiful prayer, and uh, it's very different from any other prayer that I've certainly seen in my lifetime of prayers. And the beauty of it is, is that it is aspirational in the highest sense of the term and yet it is also according to Mr. Krim valid and and pure in the moment it is the prayer for the largest possible ex experience of connection with all that there is and it's a mantra in the way of other mantras in that it's something that can be repeated and has an, a, an effect on all our vehicles, our physical, our emotional, and our mental vehicles. Each word in the mantra is chosen to be specific to that energy, and it's very, very healing experience to say the prayer for the new age every day. Some people I know set their alarms, so they're reminded to pause and say the prayer for the new age. Would you like to um, uh, share with us that prayer? Certainly. So we might quiet ourselves and just take a minute to center and if it feels right to close our eyes. And then the, it will begin. We hold everything that we think of as ourselves. We've been talking for the last 45 minutes or so about essentially fear, but fear and who we are, how we, who we are in this world, who we are as the higher self, the capital S self, and making an effort to reach out to that part of us. So holding that idea of ourselves, who are we, in a space between our eyebrows, and we would say the prayer for the new age. I am the creator of the universe. I am the father and the mother of the universe. 
everything comes from me. Everything shall return to me. Mind, spirit, and body are my temples. For the self to realize in them my supreme being and becoming. I always have a sense of expansiveness when I say that prayer. Is is this a, a new prayer or is this an um, English version of an ancient prayer, Maureen? From my understanding, I, I, and you may remember more about this than I do, Salioto, but I, my understanding is that this prayer was given through Mr. Krem for the New Age. It is the prayer for the age of the Aquarius, the age of the group, and brings us all to that center together when we say it. We unite ourselves with all that is. Hmm. So for for those who are hearing it for the first time, um, the phrase "I am the creator of the universe." Who who is the I? Is that is that uh, am I the I? <laughs> and I am the creator of the universe. Well, I for me personally, that's a, that's a almost like a cone. It's something to con- to contemplate. Who is the I? Hmm. But. According to my understanding, and I'd appreciate your insight on this, Salito, but to my experience and understanding, I is all that is. I is the is life. Like I is the prime mover. I is all. I know not, that it's, uh, it's a, mm-hmm. not personal. Um, my personal I is just a tiny part of that. But it is. But my personal I is, in fact, part of it. I invite our audience to to. We'll post that prayer on the Facebook page uh, after this show, and I invite our audience to say the prayer for the new age to to be in a space of of uh, quiet and contemplation, and to say that prayer. And if you feel moved to share an experience that you have from saying it, then definitely send us a message on Facebook. You can post privately, or if you'd like to email us privately, you can email us at info at shareontheairradio.org. And we welcome responses from people who are very familiar with the prayer and say it every day, and those who are experiencing it for the first time. I do recall, Maureen, that um, when the, uh, uh, the, the topic of the overcoming of fear was first presented, it was first presented as a talk. And um, that talk and the prayer for the New Age uh, were presented together. So clearly there was a purpose for that. And, and my understanding is that that prayer helps us to... Um, orient ourselves away from our vehicles, the physical, the emotional, the mental, our limiting vehicles, and to orient our experience to, to, um, to the, the self with the capital S. And uh, certainly I've been saying that prayer for many, 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 many years. And... Uh, my understanding, my experience has been that I, I, I you know, the, the little fears show up, but they don't stick around as long, I think. And um, j- certain fears, when I hear things that happen in the world, I'm certainly affected. I feel emotions about it, but it, it, it doesn't, uh, things don't... Uh, those feelings don't grip me, let me put it that way. Um, uh, I can experience them and um, they, those feelings move on. They don't dominate my thinking. 
That's been my experience from studying uh, Mr. Krem's writings, especially around overcoming a fear. Um, so again, transmission meditation is is so important, um, and we have a, about three minutes to touch on that. I'll I'll uh, direct our listeners to go to transmissionmeditation.org uh, to find a group that meets near your location, a location convenient to you. But let's talk a little bit more in our final minutes about transmission meditation, how that also aids us to orient to uh, expressing the qualities of our soul on the physical plane. What happens in transmission meditation, Maureen? Well, it's the simplest form of meditation with which I'm familiar, and no um, belief system uh, is required or All is a desire to serve the world and a willingness to practice transmission meditation. Very simple. We say the great invocation mantra in the beginning. Uh, And it is a group meditation, I must say, because, again, it's a meditation for the Aquarian age. And the Aquarian age is the age of the group. Whereas the Piscean age, which is we're leaving that, but all of the dregs of it are still around a little bit, is the age of the individual. We're now moving into the age of the group, and it's a meditation for groups of three or more, ideally. But it and is we're, a wonderful way to connect with your soul. Yes, and I again, we're out of time. We always talk about transmission meditation. Visit transmissionmeditation.org. There's a fantastic video that explains it more fully. Maureen, thank you so much for presenting a uh, 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 the Overcoming of Fear, as as it uh, is published in Maitreya's Mission 2 by Benjamin Krem. Thank you so much, Maureen, for joining us today. It was a pure pleasure. Thank you, Salito. You're welcome.